gonna go ahead and wire up our solar panel. We've got some, um, oh, let's start here. We've got this cable entry. Got online. Looks like this. A couple openings here. Got these, I guess, some glands. You can call them gland nuts, or they go in here for your cables. Um, I'm going to use a grommet out of here with a 7 16 drill. Um, this one here, I think, yeah, it's a 7 16 So I'll use that one to come in and uh, some lap sealant. Well, I've got some butyl tape that I'll put on the bottom here. And then I'll put some lap sealant self leveling all over here once it's all in. That's that. Let's get it wired up. This is where I'm at right now. I got my panel mounted. Got my cable here. And uh, so it's got this insulation on the outside and then it's got the two cables here. So what I might do is, I think my hole is gonna be somewhere around here. We'll see, I'll drill it from the inside. Uh, when it comes out, it might end up trimming this insulation back to come in through the two uh, gland nuts. Let's look at it from the inside. So this is an interior wall and I've got my power panel here. So I'm gonna pull this wall back and that hole in the framing is where I want my cables to come through. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run my 716 drill up through this hole, which will go through the ceiling or through the roof, and then we'll start wiring it up. <laughs> Alright, our hole ended up in the valley, unfortunately, so it's not optimum because I just, I would rather it have been up here on the mesa, but anyway, that's where it is. So here's, uh, here's our grommet. Let's see if we can get that in there and that'll protect our wires from that sharp aluminum. So it looks pretty good. I want to make sure that you clean everything really good. Give it plenty of time to dry. Kind of mocking it up a little bit here. So I think what I'll do, so this isn't, I've seen other panels that come with like a, I don't know, it's a five millimeter, two five millimeter cables. So this one came with kind of like a, a large, one large piece of insulation with the wires inside. So I think I'm gonna have to trim it, the insulation back, and then run the two individual wires in through the gland nuts and into this cover. So I think that's about where it's going to go. So I'm going to trim this insulation back and get it mounted in here. I've got my outer insulation cut back, revealing the two wires inside. I'm just going to pop a couple pieces of heat shrink on right here to give it some added protection before it enters the housing. Here's a view of these nuts. So um, the outer part here where the wire enters, you can see there's, if you unscrew this, you can see there's a piece of rubber here that it, uh, oops, sorry about that. It's a piece of rubber here that it, when this nut compresses, all these little fingers, it shrinks the size of the hole around the wire. So the wire would enter here. And then on this end, there's another nut. It's kind of like your bulkhead fitting. And then this goes through the housing with that rubber seal on the outside and the nut will go on the inside here. All right, the way they've got this sized is that the nut, when it's on the inside, can't turn because one of the sides of the hex butts up against the wall on the inside of this cover. So once you get it started, you would actually just turn the whole fitting to tighten it and that the nut stays still on the inside. I've got my two wires running through the nuts here. Be careful when you're tightening these 
the bulkhead fittings and with these rubber washers here you don't want to over torque it because it'll just push that rubber washer out it'll deform it and push it out and lose your seal so be careful if you're using a wrench I'll go ahead and slide this all together and uh, feed this end of the cables down through our grommet and just kind of see what's going on Remember, I was telling you earlier about putting tape on these. Make sure you got your ends taped up so you don't get any arky sparky. Because that panel's sitting out there in the sun right now and it's producing electricity. Alright, getting closer here. I'll go ahead and tighten up these nuts and then um, do one more good cleanup of these surfaces where we're going to put some sealant. Get this thing down. Things crank down as far as they can go, and you can see that that those holes closed up. They got those little fingers, kind of closed up like a camera iris, and uh, squish that rubber in there. And like I said earlier, I think the other solar panels I've seen had come with a larger diameter cable that might fit a little better in here. But uh, hopefully, since I added that heat shrink, gave it a little bit more diameter, it'll be all right. Kind of got a dry run here. I got it in, to where it's the most relaxed position. Uh, the cable's not really straining. It'd be a good place for it to rest, I think. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go ahead and just give this a little trace, give it a little outline. And get some of this tape on there. So I had my outline that I traced and I wanted to put a little bit of extra butyl tape in the valley here and here. And then I've got butyl tape around that all around the uh, flange here and this stuff is fresh so it is super tacky I mean it is like that's the good stuff right there look at that I even built up a little mound of butyl tape around the wire there just to, in case water does get in here maybe it'll keep it from seeping down around that grommet all right let's get this thing pushed down Now, I'm not going to use any screws. I really I'm trying to avoid putting any more holes in this brand new roof than I need to. So what we're going to do is put our lap sealant, our self-leveling sealant, uh, all the way around this, and I think it'll be all right. Be good luck with these 3M. I don't know what you want to call them, cable stays. So I'm going to put one here. Get that down with a zip tie and then I'll just put some lap sealing on it too. It'll probably hold forever. Decor. Made in the USA. Very nice. So one thing about this lap sealant, had I uh, done a little bit better planning when I did the fan and the uh, vent there. If I had this all ready to go, I probably could have got all this done with one tube. But I didn't have it ready to go, so I had to buy another tube, spend another 12 bucks to get this sealed up. So let's get this stuff on there. Did it go a little overboard? Probably, but I had a whole tube, so can't blame me. I even shot some down the side of the solar panel just because I could. There we go, I think that'll hold. Where these wires are coming down, right inside of that box on the other side here in this closet, my power distribution panel, so I think I'm going to take the solar charge controller and mount it right in here. I'm not using this light bulb function, uh, so it's okay if that's too close here. I don't need to get in there, I just need to hit these four wires here solar panel and the battery. So, what I'll do is I'll knock a, knock a hole in over here, bring the wires through on a grommet. Hook this up. We're mounted. And as for the instructions, there's a sequence to connecting this thing. So connect the battery first, then the solar panel. And I'm not using the light function, it has a light that you can have on this, but we're not going to use that. So I've got my uh, 
positive and negative here to connect my batteries, my battery power. I'm going to um, have it fuse coming in from the solar panel and then I'll connect the hot lead onto this fuse that goes into the battery power and then it'll be fused that way. Let's do it. So we're installed here. It's looking pretty good. Um, according to the instructions on the solar LED, on the left LED, green on when solar battery, when solar is charging, which is good. The center LED is the battery. Uh, green on when battery level is in the right range. Green slowly flashing when battery level is full. And uh, I've been plugged into shore power all day, so the battery is full, I'm sure. And then the right LED is for the work lamp, which I'm not using. This has a light function, uh, work lamp function that you can attach here and it would automatically come on and off, the light and dark, you had it outside, but I'm not going to use that. So uh, for fuse coming in from the panel, fuse going from the controller to the batteries, which bridges here, goes down to my batteries, and we're uh, installed. So we'll see how she does. Thanks for watching. So I was shutting everything down and I realized that uh, I can't use my master switch the way I have this wired because I had the negative going to the fuse panel and the positive going to the fuse panel. It When I turn off my master switch from my batteries, it back feeds the solar power to everything in the trailer, um, but no battery power. And it was freaking out the, the charge controller. So what I need to do is take the negative uh, from the battery here and take so my I switched my uh, master switch with my negative side of my batteries so I'm going to run this wire to my master switch on the battery side so that when I turn my switch off it'll disconnect the all the accessories from power from the solar panel but it will continue to charge the batteries that makes sense kind of an overcast day but uh, we're kicking out 13.27 and I've got the vent fan on and a light on and we're doing pretty good. Let's see what the controller says. Controller's flashing, uh, flashing green on the battery which means it's full and solar panel is showing good. So we are hooked up and we're Producing power. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> One last bit. This is the, with the fan off and lights off. No show. No shore power connected. Just the solar panel. Overcast day. Uh, Thirteen point four five four six.